Today on VIP TV, TV, a real interesting guest, former English and European light heavyweight champion, Danny McIntosh. Thanks for joining us, Danny. Um, the first obvious question, why are you coming back? I think you're 41 next month, seven years out. I know you look a million dollars and you've always looked after yourself. <laughs> why come back after seven years? You, you know, you've had the glory, you've had great nights. You fought the very best in the division, Alvarez, Bellu. You know, so what makes you come back, you know, at your age? Right. This is how it is, yeah. I literally had all those fights. I fought. Um, all the people I fought, I fought for the European title. I won the European title. Um, had, a, had a shit rematch. Fought Bellu. I went on the ball. I fought Nathan Cleverly. I went on the ball. I went over and fought a guy called the leader, Alvarez. I don't know if you can remember who he is. He knocked out yeah. Kovalev in five yeah. rounds. I went over there in two weeks' notice, because I'm a fucking idiot. I went over there two weeks' notice, and literally, I said to John Ingle, I rang him up, I said, look, I hadn't had any training, I hadn't been running, I hadn't been sparring, I hadn't done anything. And I literally said to him, look, I need some money for Christmas. And he said, Danny, there's no money. There's no money there whatsoever. I was like, John, seriously, you're my manager. You're going to have to get me a fight. I need some money. And he was like, Danny, listen, there's no fights before Christmas. There's no fucking fights. Don't worry about it. There's no fights. You'll have to wait till later. I said, right, can you get me a fight abroad? He said, right, let me tell you something. There's one fighter called the leader Alvarez. He's knocking everyone out. And he's basically fighting for a world title next. He said, you'll get your chance. You, you, you might be fighting John Pascal. I said, look, get me that fight. Get me a plane ticket to Canada. He got me a plane ticket to Canada. Canada. And that's how my mind was. I didn't give a fuck. So, at the end of the day, I, I went over, over to Canada, went eight rounds with this guy, and boxed his ears off, and then he knocked me out. But that was sort of like, that's the story of my career. I just sort of take a chance and go and have a fight and see whether I win or not. I sort of tricked my way through um, the European title. I won that. I boxed his head off, and I knocked him out. Um, so, the prep for, prep for the next fight was pretty shit, and I took the piss. And I just feel like, I am um, saying that that guy, he get that lead rather as then went and knocked out Kovalev in five rounds and he went eight rounds with me and I'd done two weeks training. So for me, I feel like I've sort of cheated my way through the game. But now I'm like, do you know what? I'm fucking mature now. I'm mature and I, I'm fit as fuck. I'm not being funny. I'm, I'm, I'm fitter than I've been for a long time. Um, I think, I mean, I've had. Since I've not been boxing, I've had seven seven businesses. I've done done the business stuff. I've been in a movie, you know. I've done all that stuff, and I just, I feel like I've still got still got image box. I can still box. I went up to um, train with Liam McAllister. We've been speaking online and stuff. And he said, "Just come up here and see see if see if you enjoyed boxing still." So I came up, had a little train, had a little spa, and he said, "Fuck me, you still got it, man. Do you want to turn back pro again?" I was like. I want to fucking have a go. I'm going to have a go. So that's what I've done. I've literally um, took the bull by the horns and I'm, I'm now, I've now got a fight. So this, yeah. this is what I want to do. So I was looking on box right. You're going to Ghana for your fight against Ibrahim Marshall. Wait. Yeah. How do you end up going to Ghana for a fight? You could have had a fight back here somewhere, in Norwich or somewhere. Oh, fuck that. There's no fights going on in Norwich. So I thought Ghana, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Nice bit of heat. We'll see how it goes. And, you know, with, with Lee McAllister, I make no bones about it. It just doesn't let anyone take the piss. Not that the Ingalls ever did or ever would. But, I mean, I think I had, I had a lot of shit when I was younger. I had a lot of shit um, coming back to Norwich. Every time I come back to Norwich, I went off the rails. So I was literally going and being a complete and utter consummate professional in Sheffield, coming back to Norwich for a little break after each fight and getting bang on it. Do you know what I mean? Going out, doing shit I shouldn't have been doing, drinking a lot, taking shit I shouldn't have been taking. And, you know, that's all very well being a pro when you're training, but you got to be pro outside the ring as well. And I weren't that, you know? I, I think I took the piss a little bit. Well, you just so now, paid for a fight, you've got to come back home, go on the piss, be a bit of a local superstar, get on the bugle, up yeah. your nose, and that would be it till the money was gone, yeah? But this is it. And, you know, I spent, I spent 100 grand in a year. Hundred grand on what? what you spend that on that. Bullshit. Um, holidays, and... holidays, cars, going out, getting pissed, getting bang on it, spending money on people I shouldn't have spent it on, spending time with people I shouldn't have spent it with, and just going places shouldn't have shouldn't have been going to. You know, and that's how that's how it goes. And I know a lot of boxers who do it, a lot yeah. of good pros who do it. 
A you're lot of them. About, you're very honest about it. You're not hiding the fact that you blow you blew your money. Listen, I don't need to. I don't need to lie to anyone. Yeah. Who, who gives a fuck about anyone's opinion anyway? Opinions are nothing to do with anybody. Well, they're nothing to do with me anyway. I don't care. And it don't have to become my reality anyway. But, I mean, I, yeah, I did, I did fuck up, and I, I feel, I feel, I feel really guilty that I've let my kids down because they should be having a. They, I mean, my kids, have got a good life anyway. But I feel like I let them down. Now they're getting older and they can see. My well, I mean, nineteen-year-old, he's great. I mean, I, I love him more than anything. My twins, my twin boys, never saw me in a boxing career, and they look at me all fights and go, "God, Dad, you're brilliant." This, that, and the other. I'm like, "Yeah, do you know what? I fucking I cheated through that shit. Do you know what I mean? And I should have done better. I should have done better for myself. Do you know what I mean? I think it's you know, I just think I took the piss a little bit. Yeah, well. What do you and think? It's, it's, it's a little bit shameful because when you when you go and pull the glitz and the glamour, that's all bullshit, isn't it? You know that, yeah, Steve. You've been there. You've been in big fights. So you've been in big fights, Bellu, and you know Alvarez in Canada at that Bell Centre in, in Montreal, wherever it was. So you've been there, but um, you've been. Th- I think you've been thinking about this for a long time. I remember I saw you. I think it was 2015 when I was at Ryan Rose's gym. You were thinking of coming back then, weren't you? So I, you was at the gym the day I was coming in there. 2015 was my last fight, I think, when I fought, um, what's his name, after the last guy knocked me out. And I just, I weren't trained. I was training out of Norwich. Um, weren't training in Sheffield because they wanted me to stay in a hotel. And I just thought, fuck that, I ain't staying in a hotel, paying for a hotel every day. So I had to, I had to leave it. So, yeah, I literally, I literally just, um, I literally just trained in Norwich with an old amateur coach who was useless. And I got my ass handed to me. And you know you can't you can't cheat boxing, you can't cheat. Because you and some other guy who's been training sits off. Have you been training as hard as him? Are you better than him? Are you doing more than him? Have you been doing more than him outside of um, a, a gym environment? Are you are, you know? And it's about discipline, being disciplined. And I didn't have it. I just started taking the piss as soon as I won the European title. That was like a poison chalice almost because I just thought oh, I was fucking easy. I trained for three weeks for that fight. Well, I was taking. Yeah. Before the fight, I was drinking before that fight. I was fucking going places shouldn't be going before that fight. And I did, you know, Brendan Ingle, uh, Dominic Ingle, John Ingle offered me that fight. And I was like, I was just listening to him. I was going to just wait until he finished and said, I was going to turn the fight down. And in the end, he said, Danny, shut up. He said, if you don't take this opportunity now, you'll never get this opportunity again in your life. And I under bated breath, I was just like, fuck, this is real. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll take it. I trained my tits off. I was doing 16 round sparring and I was sparring my mate who was 18 stone. I was letting him hit me to the head and I was just hitting him to the body because I, I was training Norwich. So I trained myself for that fight. You know, I went up um, Ingalls for the last week. I did no running for that. I was really ill. I think I had swine flu or something. But I ended up, I ended up pulling it off and I knew I was going to win. I found God before that fight as well, funnily enough. And I knew I was going to win before I entered the ring and I knocked the guy out. So you're going to you come know? up, are you coming back as a cruiserweight, I'm guessing? I'm going to come back to cruiserweight. I think I'm way more comfortable. Um, I'm more agile. I can I can throw more shots. I feel I feel it just feel healthy. Do you know what I mean? I see. I, I can I, I can eat the food I want to eat and not not feel guilty or not feel guilty for eating it. You know, and I just I, mentally, physically, psychologically, I feel a lot better. You know. Has it been hard coming up? You know, as I say, you blew a lot of your money and stuff. You know, for your media businesses since, but you blew a lot of your boxing earnings. Has it been easier, you know, cutting out the social excesses of beer and gear, that sort of thing? Nah, nah, I've been getting bang on it. No, bang but on now, it. Has it been, no, but now what I'm saying is, is it has it been easy getting off that lifestyle, out of that lifestyle now for you? Yeah, oh, yeah, fucking hell, oh, mate, it's terrible. So I'm just so glad. Um, I mean, boxing, bo- boxing brought a lot of peace to my life. To be honest with you, I know it's a, I know it's a hard sport. My, when I was younger, there was, there was a lot of drugs around, a lot of crime. I had 18 convictions before I was 15 years old. I was um, in and out of nick. This certain one, not prison, but I was in. I got nicked all the time. I was in a lot of shit. As soon as I started boxing, I got kicked out of my house when I was a kid, and then, um, funnily enough, I ended up sitting on a trolley opposite Sam Sexton's mum's garden. Sam Sexton's mum ended up taking, coming in going, Danny, are you all right? I was like, I'll be kicked out of my house. My mum kicked me out, moved my older and younger brother into a new house, and I was left sitting there on my fucking ass. I was an alcoholic at 14, so they weren't great. So from there, I got to, I'd already done kickboxing, Thai boxing, karate, jiu-jitsu, taekwondo when I was a kid, but I mean, I've, I've lost all that because obviously um, when my dad left, mum went sore up, 
up the shoot a little bit. She turned into a bit of a drinker. Monkey see, monkey do. I turned into a bit of a drinker and that all turned into a bit of shit. But um, I'm now, you know, from there, I, Sam Sexton's mum took me in and I stopped drinking from that day and I ended up sorting my shit out. So, you know, that's how it went. But I'm, you know, boxing's always brought me out of bullshit. I stopped everything. I stopped taking drugs. I stopped drinking. I stopped crime. I stopped everything. And this is what I need to do now because I just feel like I'm on a, you know, I'm not on a diamond spoil or anything, but I've just come out of business again. I just sold my business because I had a gym called Box 30. That was 30 minutes of intense boxing, integrated exercise, half an hour, full body workout. And I was right, I was running that gym, but. Oh, fuck. Fuck. I'm afraid we've lost her, Danny, there. Um, so, look, that was a tremendous insight into how life has been cruel to him, boxing has been kind to him. Um, and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much. For all boxing, info, news and latest interviews, Amateur and Pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP, boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.